Hey everybody, welcome back. 3D, this is the 3D modeling class, fall semester 2022, your first lecture, week one. Um, today, we are just getting back into the swing of things. So if you didn't touch a 3D program in the last few months, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll dust the cobwebs off today reacquaint ourselves with the program of choice, which is Blender. Um, so, uh, everybody in this class knows me, uh, because I believe everybody is from, uh, carryover from the spring semester, the spring intro basics class. So, no need to, uh, dilly-dally. Uh, if you head over to your browser, where is my browser? Firefox is my browser. Um, I just switched from Chrome. You can probably guess why. But also, I have I have a Google Home right here on this desk right here. So they're tracking everything I do and say anyway. Anyway, uh, Blender 3.2.2 um, is the latest as of Sunday night, the 21st. Uh, feel free to update or download or whatever you need to do. Once again, it's free. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Uh, this semester, we will look some more at... Uh, later in the semester, we'll look at a few other 3D programs just to kind of see what's out there. Uh, but for learning, Blender is excellent. 322 is the latest version. So let's let's just do it. Let's just jump right in. I, believe it or not, uh, did have a chance to do some r real Blender work um, through my job. Um, I, m I maybe talked about this in the spring, but we uh, we had um, uh, an agency create a 3D model for us um, because the icon for my company is a bike. Um, and previously, we'd only ever had like um, sort of like an icon, like a, something you'd make an illustrator, just like an outline of a bike. Um, but they we had a, uh, a national commercial made. Um, with a, a bike, a riderless bike, riding through several different scenes. Now, the this agency, you know, created this commercial. Uh, but they gave me the model of the bike. Um, and they did it in, a, in Maya, which is not Blender. Um, but I was able to export it from Maya and, uh, and bring it into Blender and actually kind of do some fun things. And maybe I'll show you later. If you're in the animation class, we'll definitely talk about it because, um, because I ended up doing quite a bit of an animating with this bike creating some video graphics with um, using Blender. So it's like some real Blender action. So I'm not super rusty. All right. I suppose I should switch to my, my, my Blender spot up here. Here we are in uh, the workspace. I did a new general file. Once again, I recommend that you have a three button mouse with a left click and a right click and a middle mouse wheel. Um, you can see I have my, my keystroke uh, thing on the screen. So if I do a left click, you can kind of see that little red icon pops up under my mouse. If I do a right click, you can see it does the right. And then if I do middle mouse wheel, you can see that. And if I scroll, you can see that it turns blue. It's not too big, but hopefully you can see. Also, if I type, you should be able to see me typing here uh, in the bottom right. And obviously, I changed something. All right. Navigating the workspace. Middle mouse wheel. Click and hold your middle mouse wheel. Rotates your view. Rotates your world. Um, you can also, uh, up next to my face here, um, there's these the axes here that you can click and drag. You can also uh, click on any one of these to snap to them. So it's like clicking on Z, clicking on whatever. Um, sh if you hold down the shift key, so it may be hard to see in my uh, little click helper thing. If you hold down the shift key and do middle mouse wheel, click first shift, then click and hold middle mouse wheel. That allows you to move around in the world stereo sound um, and you know scrolling your middle mouse wheel zooms in and out um, additionally a couple other things um, 
you've got your so those of you on a laptop so let's say yes you d you don't have the the three mouse wheels everything or if you don't have um i have a a large keyboard with the the 10 key on the side i use that quite a bit um but if you don't have those things any of those things you can change key bindings bindings and there are also many other ways to access these functions so for example uh moving around in the view you have a little hand here you can move like this and this zoom in and out so if you just click on that left click you can change all of these things here if you're just a mouse person but i definitely definitely encourage you to learn keyboard shortcuts for things it'll just make your life a little easier now that's navigating the workspace transform tools g for grab uh, with an object selected G will can grab and move an object around um, if you tap G uh, you can move your mouse freely right click cancels that movement G again left click will apply the movement G you can also do uh, escape if you hit G to move something around you can hit escape to cancel that or I believe if you do G and then spacebar, yep, G and spacebar will apply that transition. G is for moving. S for scale. Oh, and I, I should also say, you can move along specific axes. So G, X will only move an object in the X direction. G, Y will only do Y. And G, Z is for up and down. Um, you can also, if you hold down, uh, this is kind of, this is one I don't really use a lot, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll learn to love it. Um, if I had tap G to move and then I click and hold the middle mouse wheel, you can snap it to one of these axes. Click and hold middle mouse wheel. Uh, you can pick one and then move. And then once you release the middle mouse wheel, you'll be on that axis. Um, also to exclude an axis, you hold down shift and do that. So if I want to do just X and Y, if I tap G and then I can do shift Z, then I can move along the X and the Y. Or if I do G shift Y, I can do X and Z together. Scale, S. Make bigger, make smaller. Uh, hold down my axes modifier Z or shift Z I can flatten it out like this or click and hold the middle mouse uh, wheel and you can snap to a particular axis for scaling right click to undo you know, SX S oops I'm pressing the wrong one SX left click to apply that and finally rotate R uh, one thing to remember with rotate and move and grab is that unless if you're not using one of your axes modifiers, it's doing it relative to the camera. So like if or relative to your viewport, not necessarily the camera, because right now the camera's over here. So if I do G just like this, whoops, if I select my object, if I select my object and do G, it's moving it right or sorry left par parallel to the camera the plane of my sorry parallel to the plane of my viewport or right parallel to the plane of my viewport same thing with rotate so if i rotate it's rotating along the axis looking directly at it so like rotating like this you know the axis is a line coming straight out of my eye into the object so you'll usually end up using a modifier. So like Rx will rotate it just around the X. Ry will rotate it just around the Y, etc. You understand. The other thing about uh, r these things is uh, the origin point. This is this is maybe something that we we got into a little later in the semester. The origin point is that this little orange dot. And that is usually the center of your object. Um, so right now, looking at our transform properties for this cube, 
Transform properties are found in this little orange tab here on the right, Object Properties. Location X, Location Y, Location Z. So this is a very, very precise location, point minus point zero nine five six one five meters X and then Y and then Z. And that is precisely where this little orange dot is. So if I go zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, now it's at zero, 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 but you can see that it's, you know, the cube is like larger than one point, but that origin point is exactly on in the center of this world at location zero, x, zero, y, and zero, z. So if we go one in the z direction, there it is. So this is another way to, to transform things. You have these values here that you can type in and be precise. Um, you can also click and drag on one of these numbers and rotate. Click and drag. You know, have some fun. Um, one thing that some people do, this for some reason I did this a lot in, when I used Cinema 4D, um, but I don't use this very much in Blender. I don't know if it's just because my style has changed a little bit, but you also have transform tools up here in the top left. So this is your move tool. It'll give you handles. This is your rotate tool. This is a scale tool. So you can grab particular axes and do it like this. Um, and then you also have your like combo tool that has all of them. So it has, um, whoops, it has, uh, what am I doing? Rotate and scale and move all kind of in the same little doohickey. One thing to note about this, uh, about using your transform tools is global versus local transform values. Um, so let me delete this. Uh, don't forget to add something new into your scene. Add is A, Shift A to add something in. So let's, I'm going to add a new mesh, a new cube back in here. Um, there we go. It was number pad zero. Or sorry, number pad period key focuses on what you have selected. Um, global. So right now on the top of our viewport here, we've got uh, global. You see this word global? Transform orientations. Global and local are the two most commonly used one. Um, so you'll see that if I, let me just do rotation for example, to start with. No, no, I'll do, I'll do the combo tool. So you can see that, um, you know, if I move along the X here, you know, it's got the green arrow, sorry, Y has the green arrow, X has the red and Z has the blue. Now, if I rotate this, 90 degrees on its side like this you would if okay well just look so i gave it a 90 degree flip like this now the green is still pointing to the right and the blue is still pointing up because it, the transform orientation is the the trans these transform tools are oriented to the globe so it'll always match your global Z, global X, and global Y. Now, if I flip, if I go to this drop down and I switch this to local, you'll see that now it will have tipped. So now my green is pointing up and my blue is pointing sideways um, because it these this transform or orientation sticks to the object. So if the Z is pointing this way and then I tip it over, now the Z is pointing that way. So that's the difference between local transform orientation, global transform orientation. This will come in, this will, you'll start to understand why this is a big deal. All right, enough of that. I, I feel like um, by default, global usually makes sense. Um, anyway, zero, 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 zero. Okay, everything's reset. Uh, enough of that. Anything else? Any of this other basic stuff we should talk about? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. So just like up here, top right, in your is your collection. Camera, cube, light. So these are just the things in your scene. So um, this is a light. This is a camera. This is a your cube. You can hide from viewport and also hide from renders. Uh, zero on my number pad is camera view. That'll snap to see what your what your camera seeing. You also have um, this button here. Toggle the camera view. 
Uh, orthographic views. So um, right now we have our viewport has a perspective view. So um, we can see off in the distance and things that are farther away seem smaller. So right now the cube is pretty close to us, so it seems like a moderate size. But if I do G Shift Z, move it way over here, it gets a lot smaller. See ya. So this is larger, closer, smaller, farther. And that is perspective. Now, a lot of times in 3D, it, it uh, is helpful to have no perspective. And we use orthographic views to have no perspective. So um, uh, you have a button here, actually, that d switches from perspective to orthographic. And this is based on your uh, viewport area. So this, this is actually kind of funky. I think using it at an angle maybe isn't very helpful. This is also maybe a particular art style that you may want to use. Um, no perspective. That's this button here or number pad five so toggles between that. Um, but uh, number pad one is our front orthographic view. You can also see it says it up here, front orthographic. Three is right and seven is top. If you hold down the control key and do all those, it's the opposite. So this is back, left, and bottom. And five it toggles between perspective and orthographic. Um, I believe, yeah, so uh, four and six also uh, like rotate in like 15 degree increments in each direction and same with um, eight and two. Eight and two go like up and down. They just kind of give you a little bit of rotate at a time. Four, six, and then seven. What is nine? I guess nine. Does nine switch to your last one? One, nine. Oh, nine just switches to the opposite is another way to switch to the opposite. So this is like if you do top and then you hit nine, it goes to bottom. If you do three to do right, nine will do left. Okay. There's also, you can also like hold down control and I believe, no, is it alt? Yes. You can hold down the alt key for me, a Windows guy, and drag your middle mouse button and that can flip your orthographic views. Okay. Okay. Enough navigating. Um, let's talk about actual like modeling editing. So uh, right now we're in object mode. You can see on top left, uh, there are several modes. Um, the next one that we want to use is edit mode. So the shortcut, you could just hit the strap down and go edit mode like this. Uh, or you can hit the tab key to get into edit mode. And now the, uh, within edit mode, we can edit the vertices and edges and faces of things. So uh, right now I have uh, the whole cube selected, it's in orange. Next to edit mode, we have our select mode within edit mode. So this one is vertices. This one here is edges. And this one here is faces. So you can, there are three different things you're able to select in edit mode or manipulate in edit mode. Um, to switch between those is on your keyboard, it's one, two, three uh, on top left on, along your number row. So one is vertices, two edges, three faces. Uh, there's also a, a couple different ways to select. Um, we have tweak, select box, select circle, and select lasso. I, this is a personal preference thing, um, but usually box makes sense for me because sometimes I'll want to select multiple vertices. Um, and so I just, it just makes sense to have a box for me. Now, transform tools still apply. Um, so if I have a vertex selected, I can hit G, I can move it. I can do R and S, but really with one vertex selected, that doesn't really do anything. Um, if I select two vertices like this, then I can G, I can R rotate, and I can S scale them. I can scale them Z like this, or I can rotate X like this. Selecting two vertices is essentially the same thing as selecting an edge. So two 
we can do edges. So I can G grab an edge like that. G grab this edge. G grab this edge. And faces. Faces are essentially the same thing as selecting four or more vertices. So I can G. I can S. I can G. I can R. Cool. Um, so yeah, find find your selection tool of choice. I think circle select maybe makes sense. It, with circle select, for some people, with circle select you have to like click and hold and like kind of paint what you're wanting to select. One other thing about selection, I'll go back to selection box. So W, W is a shortcut for selection tool. And if you tap W, it cycles through these. Um, the other thing to be aware of is Keyboard shortcuts only work when you're hovering over the, the correct window. So if you if you see my mouse is over here in my scene collection, if I'm hitting W, it's not going to change it. It only works if my mouse is in the 3D viewport. W, 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 W. Um, and even like if my mouse is over the toolbar like this and I'm hitting W, it's not changing. W, W, W. Do you remember when commercials used to do that? Go to www.subway.com. <laughs> um, what are we talking about selection oh yeah one other thing about selection um, up here top right toggle x-ray uh, it's whoa didn't mean to move that it's behind my head a little bit so this one right here toggle x-ray transparent scene display allows selecting through items so you can see when I hit this my object becomes transparent I'm going to hit one for vertex select and you can select through things. So like if I select, if I go like this, I've got the, these two vertices in my selection box and I selected one on one side and one on the back side. So sometimes you like uh, X-ray select, sometimes you don't like it. <laughs> so, but it's there. Uh, move my camera up a little bit. What else can we talk about? Um, actual like modeling so you've got your transform tools here you've got measure and annotate but here's the good one extrude extrude is is the one so three for face select grab this guy e extrude and we're uh making stuff e extrude so grab a face and e extrude grab two faces you can hold down the shift key grab two faces like this let go of your shift key e extrude So you you take a face, you e extrude, you're you're pulling more faces out of it. Um, insert faces is the next one. Uh, what's the keyword shortcut for this? I. Is that no? I is insert keyframe. Or maybe it do, in edit mode, maybe I does work like that. So if I select, it's actually let me go W for my selection tool. Let me get this one. Let me go I. Yeah, I for insert faces works like that. E. And it, Extrude down like that too. Uh, oops. I, E. We're making some abstract art. I, E. I, E. You could be a modern art masterpiece. Um, yeah. The, the other thing I should say about um, extrude region is there's some other kind of mm, fringe methods of extruding. I will say um, the one time it does come in important, let's get a uh, UV sphere going here. Um, and, oh, and you know what? So hey, here's, maybe I am a little rusty. Here's another distinction. I did shift A and added this mesh while I was still in edit mode with the cube. So this, if I go tab back to object mode, if I go tab back to object mode, these two things count as one mesh. They're, or sorry, count as one object. They're both within cube here. So I need to go tab and actually just delete this. Delete, dissolve, you know, everything. Delete. Yeah, is there like, a, there's still like a little nub here. What is that? What is that? an edge why was there one edge left right there that's funny delete everything okay thank you 
Okay, back in object mode, shift A, add a UV sphere, G, move it over here. Tab for edit mode. Um, let's uh, go three for face select and let's, uh, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna grab one of these in the middle and I'm gonna hold on the alt key and click next to it. Um, and that's loop select. So it selected the loop of vertices, or sorry, loop of faces around this sphere. Um, now, if I E extrude, the default extrude is uh, not good. It just like did it s straight awkward. Um, what we can do is extrude along normals. And if we do extrude along normals, oops, undo it. You might need to grab this handle here. Um, now, if you remember, a normal is the outside of a face in the direction pointing directly perpendicular to it. So it's like straight away from a face is what a normal is on the outside. Um, so extrude along normals has this effect here on this sphere. Um, so you'll notice that they all kind of stay attached. They all stay connected here um, along the, the circumference of it. Um, if I control Z undo and I choose uh, extrude individual, hopefully you can anticipate the effect that'll have, but now we've got a uh, cog wheel or something like that. So each individual face extruded exactly straight out from it so they didn't like stretch it out so if i undo one more time and if i go back to extrude along normals you can see that by doing this each of these faces actually got bigger as it got farther away so it's extrude uh what else we got uh we already talked about insert faces uh, that's pretty simple um let's do bevel so bevel can be helpful as well I usually don't do a lot of beveling. Ah, sometimes I do. Be bevel, just be careful with bevel. Um, let's go two for edge select. Let me just select a random one. Um, let me get a loop selection going around here. So we have the bevel tool. Um, you can drag this little yellow handle to move it. And and I, hopefully you remember that any action you take. Um, has a menu that goes along with it. So when I did the one bevel, and maybe you saw it, but my bevel menu came up like this. And I can adjust the bevel here, like uh, uh, changing the number of segments. So that was by default one. And I can just tick this up to two, three, four. Now I've got uh, four levels of bevel. Levels of bevel. Um, you know, you can change the width of it. You can make it a really skinny tight bevel or make it larger. The shape, you know, you can have it be uh, concave or more rounded or just like our an actual corner. Um, you know, lots of lots of options in here. And that, you know, g going back a little bit, so now I'm in edit mode, or sorry, object mode, even just like simple move commands has a menu that pops up here on the bottom. So you can adjust the move a little bit if you like change the orientation, etc. Um, you know, er everything, everything you do has this, this menu, including the, the add menu. So like if I do, so I'm in object mode here, shift a adding a, a torus before you move it, you can change the segments, minor segments, major segments. Um, this is where you need to be a little bit careful because as soon as I click away from this, I moved my modern art off of the center here. Now I can't edit this torus anymore. But and and some people are like, well, Nolan, how do I edit it? Once, once you already made it, it's like, how long did it take you to make a torus? Torus done. Just do it again. It'll take no time. Major segments eighty one sounds like a lot. It is a lot. Let's make it sixteen. Minor segments. 16 you know minor major radius sure make it a little bigger minor radius yeah i don't even know what this is it's a sonic ring great the the 
reminder here. Here's your first like piece of advice for the semester. Always start with less. You can always add more. It's a lot harder to take away detail, take away vertices. It's e way easy to add stuff. It's a lot harder to take it away. Um, don't forget about, uh, if I go tab here for object mode, it, right click and give things a shade smooth. Usually that's going to make it things look nice. We'll talk about how, what this is actually doing a little bit more later when we talk about um, lighting and rendering and shading and things like that. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, you know, did I finish edit mode? I think I did. Oh, yeah, let's talk about knife tool. Let me just G move this out of the way. Shift A, cube, tab for edit mode. Um, so, oh, I definitely need to talk about loop cuts. Loop cuts definitely come in handy. Um, so, for example, um, if I want to cut something exactly in half, you'll want to use a loop, or if I want to cut this cube exactly in half, you'll want to use the loop cut tool. And I believe the shortcut is R, or Control R, for loop cut. So if, if I've got a selection tool, I can do Control R like this. Yep, and there's, it's showing me a little yellow outline of where I'm going to be doing my cut, um, or which loop it's calculating. So if I left click here, um, my loop cut turns orange and I can kind of slide it along the my area here. If I want it to be dead center, I'll, I can right click and then it goes into the center. And you can see that um, my loop cut and slide option pops up. Uh, let me control Z undo that. Uh, control R for loop cut. If I do want it to be at a particular point, you know, then I just, rather than right click into the center, I just left click to apply that spot. Um, here is where you can change the number of cuts. So once you click it into place, you can um, up the number of cuts here like this. Do, 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 do. 14 cuts smoothness. Oh, inverse square, root, factor, smoothness, even flipped clamp <laughs> things you can play with number of cuts one sure factor is like how far it goes smoothness zero point five oops i did oh five what's in the middle oh zero's in the middle here we go zero cool so you can you can adjust all of these things in your loop cut and slide menu um, and then it's there. Now you have more vertices to work with. So you can go three for face select and you can, you've got this and this and this. Um, let me just, we'll put a pen and put a pin in this one. Let's shift a, I'm back in object mode. I'm going to add another cube here like this. Um, knife tool. Be careful with a knife tool. It can create end guns and other nasty shapes that aren't fun to work with. But I've have seen I do see some uh, some cool uses for um, using the knife tool. So if you click uh, left click once with your knife tool, it starts to make a line um, that you can kind of drag over top of things. So like here, it kind of makes this purple line, and you can see that when I move it. Um, it makes these little green dots on the edges of my square here. And if I uh, space, nope, sorry. If I, sorry, left click, drag it across, left click again. Um, it hasn't made the cut yet. It just sort of placed those vertices. But then if I space bar, that actually makes the cut. Um, and it's added, you know, a couple new vertices. Oops. W for my selection tool, W. And it's added a couple new vertices here. Um, now, just remember back to before that a five-sided a five polygon is an n-gon, and it can create problems. And it, in fact, already has because it just sort of like folded in on itself here. Um, so be careful with the knife tool. But what I have seen that's cool that uh, some people have done with the knife tool is like adding little details. So maybe don't use it to like really add more geometry um but i've seen people use it to add little details like this so what's the shortcut for knife key um 
K, K for knife. Um, but like, let's say I wanted to add like a little like question mark thing in here like this. So like, you could draw a little question mark here. Like that space bar. And then like, you could do another like little thing here like this. So I've p seen people make like vines and things and, um, but again, like if you're using a modifier like Shade Smooth or something like that, knife tool not not good. Uh, all you can use w, w for selection tool, and then like you can like just do some kind of cool like little simple extrusions like this um, with with the knife tool. I should say um, render preview or sorry, different like viewport settings up here. By default, we've got um, solid mode. Uh, there's also material preview and render preview. Um, shortcut, keyboard shortcut for that is if you hit the Z key, um, you've got your four options here, solid, rendered, wireframe, material. So if we go to rendered like this, back into object mode, let's give this a R, Z. Oh yeah, you can also type the values in here, 90. Just wanted to see my, my cube. If I shade smooth, does that do anything? No. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's something some people do with the knife tool is like add little details just like little simple little things all right all right let's uh let's talk about modifiers real quick back into object mode let me get back into my uh solid oops z and solid mode there this guy out of the way let's go back to this cube that we cut in half i'm gonna go back to set my location here to zero 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 uh and i'm gonna get to my orthographic view and tab for edit mode uh, i think i cut it this way yep okay and i'm going to toggle x-ray select like this and i want to select these faces delete faces so now we've got half of a cube and I'm gonna add the uh, mirror modifier. That's a pretty handy one. So don't forget uh, modifiers tab is this blue one here. Excuse me. <laughs> and we have the mirror modifier under generate. And this is actually in, not in the X direction, it's in the Y direction because I was looking the wrong way when I cut it in half. And now, uh, and clipping will keep the, um, the center stuck together. So now we can, you know, you can extrude like this and it'll mirror whatever's happening on the other side. Um, one thing to do, like if you're making a person and you want to get the legs out, uh, just turn off clipping for a second and you can E, whoops, sorry. E like this and G move it apart. So then you can turn clipping back on. And then you've got another, you know, there's the legs, there's a person. Uh, the, other, the other really common one that we use is, uh, oops, let me go back to, object mode shift a i want to add a new uh uv sphere in here uh let me turn off x-ray select alt z is the keyboard shortcut for that alt z alt z oh it's also the keyboard shortcut for my radeon graphics card <laughs> uh so i won't use that um the other modifier that we do a lot is um subdivision surface and what this does is it adds more, or it subdivides every polygon, every face. So um, right now what's happening to this cube is it is, we are viewing it being subdivided one level. Uh, here, this button, this little thing hides it. So if you look at this square here, one, two, three, four sided, or if you look at this polygon right here, and I'm going to turn it on, it gets cut into four. Um, so it's sub being subdivided one time. If I subdivide again, if I turn this level up, levels viewport from one to two, it divides each of those four into four more. And now we're getting a pretty smooth sphere here, um, et cetera. You can go three. So th the important distinction here is um, levels viewport versus levels render. So this is how you will see it in while you're editing but then the render is what it'll how many times it'll subdivide when it's actually being rendered so 
just a reminder like a six is a crazy number like it's too many like it's like two times two times two times two you know two to the power of six um, which is too many um, because like even with a one level of subdivision and a right click shade smooth right click shade smooth why is it doing it shade smooth there we go i don't know why i was doing it um it looks like a perfectly round sphere so just even a little bit of subdividing um also uh with compared with a shade smooth can can make things look nice now um the nice thing about this subdivision modifier is it's non-destructive so i could still take um, if I go one for vertices, I can take this vertex and, you know, edit it, take these guys, edit it. And, uh, and it's still, you know, I still have the original mesh, uh, before it was subdivided. Um, this reminds me of, uh, proportional editing, this thing here proportional editing so this uh if you turn this on this allows you to, it's, it's in other programs it's sometimes called soft selection but if i grab one vertex here it'll also kind of influence some of the other vertexes around it um so you can see if i grab i so i have proportional editing on here this little target bullseye and if i do g you can see there's this big gray circle and actually if i mouse wheel it makes this gray circle larger and smaller but that's the area of influence like how far I'm affecting other vertices around it. So that's no moon. Uh, anyway, so that's that's proportional editing. Um, if you want to do, it's especially handy for things like this. If you want, like have lots of vertexes and you want to kind of lob things out, proportional editing is good for that. But I'm going to turn it off here. Um, uh, we're talking about the subdivision modifier. So yes, if I if we go back into um, edit mode, I'll get away from edit mode. Um, you can see that uh, it's still being subdivided. It's still being smoothed out, um, but you can still edit the original. Now, uh, one thing about subdivision surface is on cage. This one here that sometimes I find that handy uh, because it places the the uh, edges on on top of the mesh rather than so like for example if i turn this off when by pulling this out the the edges of the original mesh are like kind of hidden underneath whereas if i toggle this thing here this little upside down triangle this kind of sucks the edges to the, like the edge of the mesh so it's maybe a little easier to understand like what's happening uh, now applying sub or sorry, applying modifiers. So there are instances where you want to make this official, um, and say, okay, this, I, I don't want to have the modifier anymore. I just want to actually have all the vertices and all the mesh on there. And this is called baking. Um, so on the subdivision surface modifier here, you can hit the little drop down and you can, oh, maybe I have to be in object mode. Yes, I can hit the drop down here and hit apply. And so this is going to apply modifier and remove from the stack. So if I do this, it's gone. The mesh looks exactly the same, but now if I do edit mode, you can see it now has all of these subdivided vertices on there. Cool. All right, and obviously there's like a litany of other uh, modifiers that can do lots of different things. But that's enough for now because we're uh, it's already we're already at like forty five minutes. Okay, uh, lights and cameras briefly. Say add them into the scene same way. Shift A, add a light, a point, a sun, an area light, anything like this. I love area lights. You can point it at things. Uh, go down to your object data properties on a light. Make this a little bigger. Make this like three meters wide. Um, let's go to our render preview like this. Um, you know, by default, the lights are so dim. Change this to like a 500 watt or something like that. Change the color. Make it kind of, make it like a little, a little orangey. Something like that. Um, your camera. Let's click on the camera in the scene. 
camera has uh, lots of properties, just like real cameras. Depth of field, you can change the focal length. Uh, hitting zero on your number pad, if your mouse is in the viewport, you can change that. So you can kind of preview what your camera's doing a little bit. Um, if you want your camera to move, you can obviously use transform tools, but I like to kind of get my viewport right like this, and then uh, control alt number pad zero uh, moves the camera to where your viewport is. Um, also, you can do 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 do. If you have your camera selected, there is a way in the menus to do it, and I've promised I knew how to do it once. If I go on view cameras set, here we go. Nope, viewport navigation. Here we go. Yes, align active camera to view. Here it is. It's in the view menu. Align view, and then it's this align active camera to view, which is control alt numpad zero. Okay, oh, and now we just got to like bring these in here a little bit. Um, let's, let's cover rendering super quick. Um, render properties here. That's the back of this DSLR camera. Uh, nothing to look. Oh, yeah, render engine. Eevee is the basic viewport renderer. Um, we also have cycles, which is the fancy schmancy renderer. Um, if you have a graphics card on your camera, or in your computer. <laughs> Hopefully it's not on your computer. Um, you can change your, uh, if you're using cycles, you can change your render device to GPU compute. And this will uh, utilize your fancy graphics card for this purpose. Now, if, if this option is grayed out, don't fret. Um, go into your edit menu and go down to preferences um, and here in da, 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 you go down to system cycles render devices um, so if you've got an Nvidia graphics card um, it will be listed under CUDA um, or optics um, if you have an AMD graphics card like I do you can see I've got a 5600 XT um, you can use this HIP protocol to uh, select your graphics card to render. And then once you've got that checked, then you can change this device to GPU compute. And then it should, it'll save your processor a little bit. So like for me, OBS, which I'm using to record my lecture, uses my CPU. So if I'm trying to render cycles renders with my CPU and record at the same time, it'll really choke. And it's slower because GPUs are made for 3D graphics. So anyway, use it if you got it. Uh, what else? Okay, so I, we've changed it to um, cycles. So sampling. So this is this is like how this is telling your machine how much detail you want in your renders. So like. And we've got two options. We've got viewport and actual render. Um, so you can see, maybe you can see, but like this in my viewport here, it renders a little bit and you can see like in the shadows, there's like noise, there's like little specks. Um, and so like that's, what, if you wanted to get rid of the noise, you can turn on denoise. And it's gonna take longer to compute but it'll eventually take the noise out of the scene here like that. Um, usually people are f fine with it being in the viewport, um, but then denoise in your final render. Um, max samples. So this is like um, what Cycles does is it, ray, it traces the rays. It's ray tracing. And so it's sample. It's taking a sample of the light and calculating what how it would look on it on every surface and so the number of samples here is like how many times it's going to calculate the light and so more samples equals more detail equals more accurate um, or more photorealistic now 4096 is a huge number for me honestly so like 
for a render, I might even maybe cap this at just 96. I don't need 4,096. And like viewport too, same thing. Like give me like 64 in the viewport. It's it's not a big deal. Um, the other thing you can do is set a time limit. Um, so you can say like, I don't want you to render any one image for more than 30 seconds or 10 minutes or whatever. So you can just set that here. So like rather than having to play the guessing game, it's like, well, like I only have three hours until my project's done. I don't know how many samples it can be. We'll say like, well, I only want one hour's worth of <laughs> render time. I don't think anyone's going to have an hour worth of rendering unless they have a, a kind of a slow computer. So anyway, um, lots of, uh, we'll, we have a whole lecture dedicated to this. So we'll like cover that in a little bit. Um, output properties, the one right under here. This is the simpler stuff. Resolution X, Y, uh, we don't need to worry about frame rate because we're not animating any of that stuff. Output, um, you know, file format doesn't make that much of a difference. PNG or JPEG, it's all good. Um, yeah, and then just like give it a render. F12 if you've if you've got it or you've got a render menu up here. And here it goes. So I, I said 96 uh, samples. So not too bad. Oh, of course, I'm like clicking the wrong window here. So we've got some nice shadows. Um, cycles, I encourage you to use cycles here in the modeling class because cycles is where you can get the really mwah, like sweet renders. Um, and, you know, it's it's slower, but in this in the modeling class, we'll, we'll only be doing single like still images so like if you want to really beef up your renders i uh, encourage you to experiment with that a little bit in this class okay uh was there anything else any other the any of the other basic stuff so like this is it for your like a refresher um obviously we've went over the the course schedule so you kind of know what's coming um, but we're going to just kind of jump right into it. So now your first one hour model. All right. So one hour model. So this is, so we have several of these through the semester and they're like, I actually want you to set a timer, like get out your phone, set a timer for 60 minutes and it doesn't have to be like straight. I mean, you could do 30 minute chunks or whatever if you need to. Um, but, but the key is to like not spend too much time on it and just kind of see, like experiment for a little while, see what works, see what doesn't work and just get as far as you can in an hour. It doesn't have to be like finished, but it, it should at least resemble what, what the prompt is. Um, and the goal of these is for you to just like practice starting modeling something. Um, because I think a lot of times it's, that's the, the hardest part is like knowing where to start, um, and not being afraid to start over. Um, because like, especially with modeling things in 3d, um, you got to have like a good foundation to, to build off of like literally and figuratively. Um, and it's, it's easy to identify it's, well, it's, it's, it's being able to create good foundations for your models is something that is like practiced. And so, um, you know, we have, a f Oops, excuse me, we have our assignments this semester, um, that are like bigger projects that, uh, you know, you'll spend a lot of time on, but I think I want these to be like smaller things that you just kind of practice the basics, kind of a little bit of repetition to kind of, to get good at just starting creating models. So anyway, this week. And, and we'll, you only need, or only get, I should say, one week to do this. Um, so this is due, you know, next Thursday, the, or sorry, next Monday, the 29th. But only, it'll only take an hour. Don't do any more than an hour, unless you're, unless you really want to. But um, I want you to make a lamp. So it's, it seems pretty mundane, but like, maybe it's a lamp on your desk, or maybe it's a lamp that you Google or you see something on Amazon. Um, and like study its shape a little bit. Think about how you'd start. What, what mesh 
What base mesh would you start with? Would you start with a cylinder? Would you start with a cube? Would you start with a torus? You don't need to like you don't need to render you don't need to have lights you don't need to have materials the focus here especially for this first one is just like get a good model and it doesn't have to be good just start making a model of a lamp and see if you can make a nice lamp maybe you mess up and you need to start over anyway that is it for your first lecture 3d modeling next week we'll jump right into character modeling so um we'll We'll look at um, what makes a good character model. Good, good. Um, what makes a useful character model? Um, some tips and tricks on getting that going. And uh, we'll continue from there. Anyway, glad to have you back. Welcome back. It's funny to think that like it's August now, the start of the semester. And when the semester ends, it's probably going to be like freezing with snow on the ground. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of change happening. Happy modeling. Looking forward to seeing you. Uh, so no, remember, no Zoom next week. And then the week after that is Labor Day. So uh, I'll see you on Zoom in two weeks. No, three. Well, it depends on when you watch it. After Labor Day. Uh, but you'll get a lecture from me next week. Anyway, that's all. Toodaloo. Goodbye.